Hello everyone. So this is a case of a simple and straightforward hysteroscopic myoma resection for a type 0 to type 1 submucous myoma. As you can see over here, this is the uterine cavity uh, which is seen clearly. This is the external contour of the uterus about here. And as you can see, there is a submucous myoma sitting right over here which can be uh, seen to be clearly indenting the endometrial cavity and uh, this of course requires removal because with this with the presence of this submucous myoma there is no way that the patient will be able to conceive with such a large space occupying lesion occupying the uh, uterine cavity so let's see what are the technicalities involved in this simple procedure but uh, technically challenging for someone who does not know how to use the resectoscope properly and what are the safeguards that uh, he or she should undergo uh, i mean should take before they decide to uh, start this procedure so the procedure starts and we can see that the hysteroscope is entering into the uterine cavity and uh, as the hysteroscope enters you can clearly see that there is a bulge of the fibroid which is seen on the right lateral wall there is no similar bulge on the left side and there is a small polyp though and uh, what is surprising is that in the ultrasound report we saw that there is there was a type 0 to type 1 fibroid which um, actually means that the fibroid in its size should have been at least uh, once you start the hysteroscopy should have been at least this big or this much projecting inside however what we forget is that the pressure of the distending saline causes the fibroid to get pushed up and into the myometrium and as a result of which this fibroid which actually would have appeared to be type 0 or type 1 in the ultrasound now appears to be type 2 in the actual surgery so our job is to convert it from type 2 to type 1 and make our surgery safer and easier rather than try to operate on a type 2 and make the surgery more difficult by having to burrow inside the uterine wall thereby increasing the possibility of a perforation as well as increasing the possibility of a, a fluid overload so the first thing to do is whenever you are doing diagnostic hysteroscopy one must quickly scan the uterine cavity for any other abnormalities and in effect what we are doing is we are kind of planning the surgery uh, planning the surgery to decide exactly from where the cut is going to be made how it is going to be made and uh, what is going to be the end point of the surgery and so on unlike laparoscopic surgery hysteroscopic surgery is very different because you are you do not have the luxury of uh, wasting time inside intraoperatively because every minute that you waste is going to push the patient closer and closer to fluid overload so with this assessment done let us start with the operative part of the case so before starting with the operative part one additional thing that we do we reduce the distension pressure and here you can see with the reduced distension pressure how the fibroid bulges inside the uterine cavity and now you will believe when the sonologist tells you that this in fact is a type 0 or a type 1 fibroid but see how beautifully it is getting pushed out of the uterine cavity because of the distension pressure so uh, this is the diagnostic part and now we move on to the operative so the operative case starts and you can see how the picture inside changes even with a one attempt of distension and uh, uh, deflation and again reinflation of the uterine cavity you can see everything has become red there is some mucosal uh, hemorrhages that have set in and the picture inside has changed if i had not done office hysteroscope, uh, hysteroscopy before and directly proceed to put in a resectoscope this is i am using a 22 frame bipolar resectoscope with normal saline we stopped using glycine a long time ago but this also requires a dilatation of up to Hagar number 7.5 or 8 and because of this dilatation there are some artifacts created 
So moving on to the actual surgery, you can see I'm taking small strips of tissue of the fibroid starting from the fundus and moving my way down. So we do not try to dissect away from the surgeon, but the loop is activated and pulled towards the surgeon. The clear differentiation here between the fibroid and the texture of the uh, myometrium is clearly seen. So you can see over here, this eco texture is definitely different from this one, which is more pinkish. This is more whitish. And what I'm going to try and do is you can try and imagine that this was the fibroid over here. Yeah, this part of the fibroid has already been shaved off and this part of the fibroid now remains. So what uh, we are going to try and do is that we are going to try and do what we call as cold loop dissection. When uh, this is not a loop specifically for cold loop dissection, there are more sturdier loops also available. But basically what cold loop dissection does is that you can imagine that if this is the outer limit of the myoma, then there is a pseudo capsule here much the same way as there would be a pseudo capsule in laparoscopic myomectomy and that pseudo capsule is holding the fibroid back so with movements of the resectoscope what i am going to try to do is i am going to try and push the fibroid away from the myometrium at the level of the pseudo capsule and with the fibroid gently tented i am going to give a very small burst of energy yeah a small burst of energy and when I give this small burst of energy I am going to push the fibroid away and not pull the resectoscope towards myself remember this is only to be done when you are quite confident with your hysteroscopic surgery and this may be considered as an advanced level of hysteroscopic surgery as far as the beginner or standard teaching is concerned the dictum always is do not push with the resectoscope. So remember that if you are in the learning earlier part of the learning curve, you will not attempt this maneuver. But as later on, when you move along, you find that this maneuver becomes very helpful in dislodging the fibroid from its attachment to the myometrium and getting the result that you want, which is conversion of a deeper type 2 or type 3 myoma into a type 0 or a type 1 myoma. So let's play the video and you can see with the reduction in pressure that I am doing successively, you can see how the fibroid bulges into the uterine cavity. At the height of the bulge, I try to isolate the fibroid from the myometrium which is there underneath and I give a small burst of current and you can see the fibroid starts bulging into the endometrial cavity. Again, the loop placed over there, a gentle push given by the loop towards the cranial end and a small, very small millisecond burst of energy. And you can appreciate how beautifully the fibroid is making its way into the endometrial cavity. And notice that as the fibroid gets resected, the myometrium behind the fibroid starts becoming into view. Here I am reducing and increasing the distension pressure, a procedure called as Hamu's massage which forces the fibroid to bulge inside the uterine cavity because the myometrial fibers behind the fibroid force or squeeze the fibroid into the uterine cavity. You can see how beautifully the fibroid is bulging into the endometrial cavity now, making it very easy for me to take the cuts and shave out pieces of the fibroid, which I would otherwise have to have to go inside the uterine wall to do the same uh, surgery. Here again, I place the loop at the base of the fibroid or where the pseudo capsule would be expected and I apply a slight burst of current and I find that the fibroid starts bulging or moving closer and closer to the endometrial cavity. Again, the same step is repeated and by now my hand is actually able to feel the mass of the fibroid moving away separately from the myometrium. It's a tactile sensation. When you actually do such cases, you will be able to appreciate that even with the resectoscope, one is able to get the tactile sensation and see how beautifully the fibroid has started bulging into the uterine cavity, giving you a very easy cut as compared to what you would have had to do if you had to literally go inside the uterine cavity into the myometrium and scoop out the fibroid from its attachment. So here you can see the loop comfortably placed behind the fibroid and the pinkish myometrium coming up behind the fibroid. So one is able to clearly appreciate that behind the air bubble now is the fibroid and behind that fibroid 
fibroid so here if i pause the frame over here you can clearly see that this is the brownish tissue of the fibroid but here if you keep looking closely when the video plays you will see that there is pinkish myometrium and this pink myometrium suggests that a complete job of the surgery has been done and that you will not have any residual bit of the fibroid at all so just as a recap this is the fibroid over here and this is the complete myometrium which is behind the fibroid signifying that all of the fibroid has now been removed so again i go in i cut this part and i keep on dislodging the smaller pieces with very small bursts of current remember at this stage if the current is not if your hand is not coordinated well then this kind of pushing with the resectoscope loop may result in the resectoscope perforating the fundus of the uterus so one has to be very careful when one attempts this maneuver now here you can see the entire mass has been removed and whatever is seen behind the mass is now completely myometrial fibers and therefore you can definitely say that the fibroid has been completely enucleated one can even reconfirm this if you have an intraoperative ultrasound but in my opinion this is not required because for the size of the fibroid which we had mentioned and the location and the type of fibroid and the fact that we are able to now clearly see myometrium behind the excised area one can be 100% sure that the fibroid has been removed in case there are bleeders from the base one can always coagulate the bleeders using coagulating current as compared to the cutting current which we were using till now so i think this is the fibroid which has now been completely removed and this is an unedited completely unedited video so you can see the surgery has been completed in just under 5 to 10 minutes so it is not a difficult surgery if one actually knows how to do it properly but it has to be done carefully using these two techniques of cold loop dissection and hamus massage as i have demonstrated in the video So if you like the video please click on the icon above to subscribe to our channel and to keep receiving more updates and for those of you who have not yet joined I would encourage you to visit our website www.endogynetraining.com that's endo g y n e training uh, it's one word training.com where we have a link to join our whatsapp group you can join the whatsapp group and you can also take part in the weekly discussions that happen regarding daily life dilemmas and decision making in gynae endoscopy so that's all for now if you like the video please subscribe to our channel to keep receiving more such updates thank you for your patience and for listening